Hi everyone, I'm Gemma. And today, I'm going to be speaking about a topic that I'm sure many of you are quite unfamiliar with. But it is something that my family is very passionate about. And to prove that I too am passionate about farming, I'm wearing my Regenerative Land Management Crofronet 2021 cap. <laughs> All right, so to start things off, I'm going to ask you to take a close look at this picture. What do you see? Jungle, trees, clear water, greenery, forest. Now look at this one. What do you see here? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> so I hate to break it to you, but this picture on the left is about to turn into the picture on the right if we do not take action. So if we take a look at the world map, we can see that the area is in green and the area is in brown. Now the areas in green are not desertifying and the areas in brown are. And if we take an even closer look and circle the areas in brown, it's scary to say that two thirds of our planet's earth, planet's land, is actually desertifying. So what can we do about this and where do we even start? Well, I've got awesome news for you. We've started already. <laughs> in a place most easily found if you take a pin and throw it into the middle of nowhere on this map, in a place called Grafrenet. <laughs> okay, so this is where my family and I have been living, and my family has been here for more than 100 years now. And it's often joked in the Grafies area that if you shake a karoo bush really hard, a croon may jump out from behind it. <laughs> So we live just outside of Crafies on a farm called Clipdrift. No rhyme, not like the brandy. But yes, it is the place circled in yellow. This is where we farm merino sheep for their wool and for our brais. We, we farm goats for their mohair and cattle for trade. This is where I've lived and this is where I've called home for almost 20, well, more than 23 years now. And as you can see from the pictures, it's been an awesome place to grow up. You can also see from the bottom middle picture, I wasn't quite sure if I was going for the long short or short long look, but we're gonna chat about desertification instead. <laughs> now I'm sure many of you have traveled through the Karoo before and agree with me that you'd see exactly this. Karoo bush, Karoo bush, more Karoo bush, and an aloe if you're lucky. So I'm sure it's not a surprise to you when I tell you that the Karoo is a desertifying area. But what would be a surprise to you is if I told you that this area used to be covered in tall grasslands. The early travelers used to travel past and through this area on horseback and feel the tall grass brush against their stirrups. Well, this can be possible again if we use holistic management. Now, holistic management is a decision-making tool designed to regenerate land using livestock, such as sheep, cattle, and goats, as the main management tool. As you can see, this is our sheep doing their bit on our farm. This picture was taken back in 1974. This is when my family first moved to Clipdrift, and as you can see, the farm was in a terrible state. It was covered in these deep gullies, or dongas, and because of all the erosion, and my grandparents had no idea what to do. They could see that it was in a drastic state, something had gone wrong, but they had no idea where to start. It wasn't until they met a man by the name of Alan Savory. He's now known as the founder of holistic management. He's also a world-renowned ecologist who believed that the areas, that the semi-arid areas, such as the Karoo, where Clipchift is situated, have the potential to reverse climate change. My family first met him back in the 1960s when he shared his insights and observations about degraded land in Zimbabwe. So my grandpa was so fascinated by this that he believed that this could fix the evident problem on clip drift. So immediately he put it into practice. He started this process and regenerated the land on clip drift. And this is what we see today. I mean, this is what we saw. I'm gonna show you what we see today. <laughs> So if we look back at this picture, I want you to take note of the gullies and the dongas and the erosion and also note where the arrow is pointing. 
Now pay attention. This is the exact same spot 30 odd years later after holistic management had been practiced on the farm. Where the gully's at, where's the erosion at? Check the ground cover. Now, this is that exact same spot, and this photo was taken last week. Note the trees, the greenery, no gullies. It's also important to note that the picture in 1974 was taken after the equivalent of 30 buckets of water had fallen on one square meter of land. The picture taken in 2021 was taken after only six buckets of water had fallen on one square meter of land. It's crazy, right? Don't believe me? I'll show you another one. <laughs> this pic was taken in 1977 before any holistic management had been practiced on this land. Okay, take note of the arrow once again. 40 years later, look what we got. Picture in 1977, taken after the equivalent of 20 buckets of water had fallen on one square meter of land. Picture on the right, after only six buckets of water had fallen on one square meter of land. So how on earth has there been such drastic change? And what does holistic management even do? Well, it's all about mimicking nature. Now I'm sure all of you sitting here have watched National Geographic and Planet Earth and have seen how animals group together in tight herds as a safety mechanism against predators. Because safety in numbers, right? Well, these animals move around in their tight herds from area to area, eating what they can, defecating, urinating wherever they please, breaking up the soil with their hooves, and then leaving the soil rich and healthy from where they've moved on. This is very similar to you preparing your soil getting it ready to plant your veggies. You take your rake, you break up the soil, then you take your fertilizer and sprinkle it over to make it rich and healthy. It's the same thing. Okay. But now that civilization has come and herds can no longer roam free freely, that has caused the barrenness and the eroded land that I showed you back in 1974. Hence, and hence the Karubush after Karubush after Karubush, maybe an aloe. But if you control the livestock in a way that mimics nature, you will transform the land back into the grasslands that were once there. This is what we did on Clip Drift, and that is why my siblings and I are standing in knee-high grass. This was done by using time management and fencing as our main tools. Time management prevents the overgrazing of the land so that animals are moved on before they can take more than one munch of a plant. And then the fencing controls the animals. The, this is an aerial view of clip drift, and this is the fencing that we put in place. Very complicated, as you can see, but I'm going to dumb it down a bit. It has been subdivided into eight camps. These camps have all been sub subdivided into simple radial cells, each with a water point in the middle. This forms a wagon wheel shape, and this is one wagon wheel, and you can see the farm is made out of many wagon wheels. So how does a wagon wheel work? Well, the animals are brought into grazing area A, and once, after about four to five days, they are then moved to grazing area B. Once all the grazing areas have been grazed in the specific wagon wheel, they are then moved to the new wagon wheel, which would be the wagon wheel in yellow, allowing the felt sufficient time to recover before it is grazed again. This is a picture of what a cell center actually looks like. And as you can see, there's a trough in the middle, and then there are gates facing outwards. And then this is my dad a few days ago, demonstrating how the animals move from grazing area A to grazing area B. So this is what we call a cell center. Here come a group of um, cattle to the watering point. And then they'll proceed up that way. We will open the gate and they'll go out um, to, into one of the paddocks. And 
I got out into one of the paddocks to graze. Right. So you can see from that that the fencing controls the stock and the time management controls the amount of time they're allowed to graze in the specific paddock for. This is the effect. The effect can clearly be seen by this picture. Now the farmer on the left is using holistic management. The farmer on the right is using conventional methods. It's clear that the side on the left, using holistic management, has a lot more ground cover, meaning the soil is protected from the elements, such as the wind and the sun, allowing, it to, allowing the water to slow down and seep deep into the soil. Much like us red and yellow students, the soil acts like a sponge, absorbs all the goodness and releases it when it's ready. On clip drift, the sponge effect has been phenomenal. In 2016, during a particularly severe drought, my dad was wondering why the cattle weren't coming to the central water facility to drink. So off he went into the felt looking for the cattle when he came across this. This is a replenished spring that has been dry for more than 100 years. They, it was revitalized because of the sponge effect and was replenished from the bottom up, both to my dad and the cattle's delight. With the simple use of sheep and other livestock, my family have been able to turn a once desertified area into an oasis in the middle of nowhere. Now imagine the potential of using holistic management in the rest of the world. It's phenomenal what has happened in a place most easily found if you take a pin, throw it into the middle of nowhere on the map in a place called Hrafrenet.